Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat. In today's video, we're gonna show how to do some OD work in the RLX lathe. Before we get started, I wanna show you the part that we're about to make. As you can tell here, it's got quite a bit of intricate work in it. We're actually doing some facing of the part. We're gonna do an OD cycle. We're gonna do a couple of grooves and then we're gonna thread the piece part. I'm not gonna cut it off just to make it simple, but I know you guys know how to do that as well, okay? So as you can tell on the screen right here, I've actually got the program finished right here and you can see everything I'm gonna do from my cycle event to my grooves to my threading. And of course, before I can show you how to do all this stuff, I'm gonna to have to erase this program. So in the next part of this, you're gonna see me start from scratch and we're gonna go through this whole process. So let's get started. So here I am, I'm at the main screen and I'm about to make a program. So far, all I've done was put the part number on the first page of the program. And so I'm just gonna push go to begin and here you'll see that it's asked me, what do I wanna do first? According to my program here, what I wanna do is the first thing is I'm gonna use a turning event and I wanna face off the end of the part. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna start outside of my material. My material is one and an eighth. So I'm gonna just start at 1.2 and I'm establishing Z zero. My X, I wanna go a little bit past. So I'm gonna go minus 100 thousandths, keep that at Z zero. Okay, there's no chamfer. I need to change my tool offset from center to right. Now there's two ways to do that. One is to use the drop down menu. The other is just to push one like all the other controls and it'll switch automatically. And then my surface footage, I'm gonna put it at 400 surface feet. I'm gonna use eight thousandths per revolution and use tool number one. And you can see here on the left hand side that there's my first turn move, okay? The next thing I'm gonna do is a cycle event. And this cycle event's gonna cover everything you need to know about an OD cycle. All right, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is I need to start inside of my chamfer. So I'm gonna start at about a quarter of an inch and then work my way out. My Z is gonna start at zero. My depth of cut, I'm just gonna put it at 50 thousandths. I am going to use the Z, which I wanna remind you in my defaults, I have it set up for my approach to always be Z. I can change it with the drop down menu if needed. So I'm gonna select that. My 400 is already in there. My 8 thousandths is already in there. I'm still using tool number one. And then here I wanna go into my options and I wanna turn on my Z finish cut. Okay, the reason for that is so I can have a different cut on my diameters than I have on the actual faces of the part. And you can see that they're also pre-programmed in my defaults. So here's my finished surface feed. I'm gonna use 400 for that as well, but I'm gonna knock that down to six thousandths, which is already in there. My finished tool is still gonna to be tool number one. And last but not least, I wanna explain that when I use the same tool for my roughing as I do for my finishing, I have the ability to turn this button on and have it stop between the two so that I can make a measurement or move chips out of the way or whatever. In our case, I don't need it, so I'm just gonna leave it at no, hit the set key. So there's my starting point where that green dot is, and now I'm ready to start describing what I wanna do. So my first thing I'm gonna do is a cycle turn. My X is gonna come out to my first diameter, which is a half an inch. My Z is gonna stay at zero, and I've got 100 thousandths chamfer on the corner. So you see with that green line, there's my first move. My next move, I'm gonna come out, and I'm gonna come all the way to the end where it says minus three quarters of an inch. But first of all, it's asking me X. So I like to program that the ink set key means no change. So just ink set for X, my Z is gonna be minus 0.75 absolute. And then instead of a chamfer, they're actually asking for a radius here. So I'm gonna use my options page, and I'm gonna change the chamfer to a Conrad, close the options page, and put in my size of 125, okay? You see the chamfer as a starting to draw here. The next thing it's asking me to do is turn out to the next diameter, which is three quarters of an inch. No change on my Z dimension, and then there's no chamfer either. So you'll see the arc right there. The next piece, I'm gonna move all the way across, even where the grooves are, I'm gonna go beyond that for now. So I'm just gonna turn, my diameter is no change or ink set. My Z goes all the way to a length of minus two and an eighth. And in here, I don't have a chamfer or a Conrad because I'm actually gonna do an arc, okay? So I'm gonna leave it right there and I'm gonna select arc. Now when I do an arc in here, my defaults have it set up to be a clockwise arc, which is what I need, but I could use the drop down menu to change it if it was different. Okay, so I'm gonna keep that the same. My X comes out to my one inch diameter. My Z is going to actually go negative another eighth of an inch, okay? So in order to do that, if I'm already at two and an eighth, I'm just gonna go to minus two and a quarter. Absolute, and then the radius is one eighth. 
and there's no extra chamfer in there. So you'll see my arc right there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn to the end of the part. So for my x-axis, it's just no change or ink set. My z is going to go to minus three inches absolute, and there's no chamfer there either. So that's my completed geometry. However, my material is actually an eighth of an inch bigger than what my part is. So I have one more turning event, come out to one and an eighth, leave the Z at no change or ink set, and there's no chamfer. And the last thing I gotta do is close this box so it knows where to rough and where to finish. So I'm gonna use a cycle position, ink set for no change, I'm not moving the X. The Z is gonna come back to absolute zero. And you'll notice that by the dotted line, that's my material. And the last thing I'm gonna do is push end cycle. It's gonna remind me I need to close that box, but it'll do it for me when I push yes, and that's completed, okay? The next thing that I'm going to do is my grooving, okay? So I'm gonna go into here and you go to groove, and here it's asking if it's ID, OD, and my other selection would be a face groove, but this one's actually OD, so it falls under the default, okay? My X beginning is my diameter of 750. My Z number one is the distance from here to the beginning of the groove. On my print, it shows it at minus an inch and a half. And Z2 could be minus an inch and a half also, or again, no change. My X end is my minor diameter, which is a half inch. My Z number three is the other side. Since it's an eighth wide, it's going to be minus 1.625, absolute. I'm gonna use ink set for the other side again. And one more thing I wanna remind you, the reason it asks for all four Zs is I can do a tapered groove, but in this case, I just don't happen to have one. The next two questions are for blending either a radius or a chamfer at the top or the bottom of my groove, but I don't need those in this case, so I'm gonna leave them at zero. The amount of chip breaks I wanna have as I'm hogging out the middle of the groove, I'm gonna put at three. My surface footage, I'm gonna stick with the 400, but I'm going to change my thousands per rev down to two thousands. I'm gonna use my finish cut here that it has in here. Um, that's fine right where it's at. My finish surface footage is already in here. I'm gonna take this all the way down to 1,000 to get a really nice finish in the end. And I'm gonna use tool number two. So what you'll see right here in red is the next entity, which is my groove. And I need to make a second groove in this part, but instead of using the actual groove cycle, I'm gonna show you how to just do it with a repeat. So I'm gonna to go to repeat. It asked me which event I'm gonna repeat, and the last event I used was event 12. So I'm gonna take event number 12 and put it in my repeat. My X offset is no change, and my Z offset is the distance from one to the other, which is a quarter of an inch, so minus 0.25. Number of repeats, one more. Same tool number, you'll see there is the second groove. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread this section right here, okay? So I'm gonna to go to thread. It asks what my diameter is where I want to begin, and that's my three quarters of an inch. My Z beginning point is actually minus three quarters of an inch. My X end stays the same, so ink set. And my Z end goes all the way into the groove, so I'm going to go to the minus 1.625. Okay, my pitch of the thread, this is a three quarter 10, so it's pretty simple. It's just uh, 0.1. All right, my number of passes, I'm gonna do eight passes for the rough, one for the spring pass at the final bottom of the, of the thread. My plunge angle, I can put any angle in here I want, but if I put nothing in push set, it'll automatically assume it's a 60 degree thread, so it'll give me 29 and a half. My defaults say that I'm generally going to do an outside thread, which it is. Number of starts, it'll do up to 10 leads, but this is a single lead thread. My RPM is automatically calculated, but I know I can do it much faster than that. So I'm gonna change that to 300. I'm gonna change this to tool number three. You'll see my thread is right here all the way into the thread groove relief, okay? So the next thing that I would do now is since my part looks correct is I would go to my tool table. And in my tool table, you'll see here that my part zero is already set and my library tools are already set. Well, my part itself doesn't know what I'm using for the tools. So I could set these up individually like I showed you in a previous video. However, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna move these tools into my program. So my first tool here is tool number one. Select one and it inputs it into the program. My next tool is my OD groove, number two. And my last tool is my OD thread tool, which is number three. Now you see all of my tools are set correctly. Next thing I'm gonna do is close the flyout window for that and I'm gonna change modes. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to setup mode and I just wanna check my tool path. So when I go to tool path, You'll see in here, if I move this over and make it a little bigger, 
you can see all of my rough cuts. My tool changes, of course, you'll see it come in here where it does the grooving and the pecking, goes back home, comes in again, does the threading, and it's a completed part. Okay, so that all looks great. One last thing I can show you is verify. If I go to verify part, I'll slow it down just a little bit, push that button, it's gonna show you a simulation of what it is that we're actually gonna do. Okay, and as you can tell from there, for the verification, everything looks right. So the last thing we have to do is to exit out of here and go and run this part. Now, when I switch to the run mode, I do have an indexer in here, which means that when I push start, it's gonna remind me right away to turn on the spindle because it doesn't stop at the home position. And as always, I'm gonna use tracking just to make sure I'm in the right place, right? So I come into here and I turn my spindle on, and then I'm just gonna turn the hand wheel to get myself going. Okay. Now I'm using the slower hand wheel just because it keeps me out of the camera. So you notice it automatically indexes and now it's gonna move over to my starting point. And once I get in here, I know I'm in the right place, right? I just wanna check one time. Looks good to me. So I'm gonna hit stop, CNC go. Hit the go button and let it run. And there you go. So there's our completed part. Hopefully by what we did showing you how to program several different things in the OD on the RLX will be very beneficial to you. And then I'm gonna take this part out here in a minute so you can see a better view of what it actually looks like. Okay guys, so here it is. You look at our completed part right here and I'll move it around a little bit so hopefully you're getting a good view of it here, right? But you can see everything from where I faced off the part to I use the OD cycle to make the basic shape of the part followed by the two grooves, one for thread relief, one for just the second groove, and then threading in the center of the part. 
Okay, so hopefully this gives you a really good head start on how to use the RLX to do OD work. In my next video, I'm gonna show you how to do some other high-tech stuff on the OD. And then eventually I'm gonna do another video that actually does ID work for the RLX. But for now, I hope you, this gets you started and you really got something out of this. I know I enjoyed teaching it to you. I will see you in the next video, but as always, don't forget to keep on tracking. Four! Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat out here on the links enjoying a little free time after a long day of work. As usual, we're hearing that a lot of the videos are helping you guys out there make a little bit more money. I hope that's the case and I hope you take that extra money and a little extra time and get out and hit the links yourself. Of course, me, I'm out here having a good time right now, but next week I'll be back in there doing the next video. We love it when you watch them. We really like it when you give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, push this button over here. And of course, if you'd like to watch the next video, just push the one over here. I'll see you either on the links or I'll see you in the next video. As always, don't forget to keep on tracking. Man, I gotta go find that ball.